Okay. Thank you, Dimitri, for the introduction. First of all, I would like to, to thank the organizers for the opportunity to talk about my work and all the models and the results that I will present today was from my PhD thesis with Vitor as my, my advisor. So, in general, I will talk about uh, electrostatic interactions and I will split my, my talk in two, two topics. The first one is, well, how we investigate or we study the electrostatic interaction during the folding process. And I'll talk a little bit of the model that we use with the, we do the folding using structure-based model and with a constituted molecular dynamics. And I pressed some results. And the second part, I'll talk about the contribution to electrostatic interaction to stabilize the protein HV state. I'll talk about the model that we use based on Tom Ford Kirkwood and pre also present some results about that. And talk in general about uh, electrostatic interactions is one of the, the fundamental interaction of the nature. So particular talk in, in biological system in proteins, which are our interest, it's, it's, it's related to the protein structure, is related to the stability of my protein, the function, bind sites, the cognition, and how the charts interact with, you, with you, each other, and how we measure this electrostatic interaction depends of the salt concentration of our environment, the charge distribution of our proteins, and the pH condition. So, first, talk about the protein fold. We use the, uh, the structure David model, plus uh, the bihuchal potential to take into account the electrostatic interaction. We perform a constant pH molecular dynamics, and I show some results from the, these three, three systems, NTL9 protein, protein G, and the coat shock. So, the structure David model as also discussed in these last two weeks. And the basic idea that we have using these models is that uh, we, our residue of the, the residue of our protein, we will simplify this to a, to a C alpha, a bit, in a C alpha position. And the minimum of this potential are based on the, our reference structure. And this is the standard C alpha SBM, and then we add uh, an electrostatic potential uh, via by the by hook potential. And this kind of simulation, it's already been done. We have a lot of works in the literature from that. And uh, with this simulation, the main idea is the charge, the residues which it has uh, is a charged polar side chain. We plus put uh, a charge, and it keep held fixed during all the simulation. Is that what this this model do? And uh, what we try to investigate here is that uh, in nature, during the folding process, the the charge is not necessarily are held fixed. So. We add a, a energy function associ associated to the protonation or the protonation of this residue. And then now we have the pH dependency associated to the, the pKa of the chosen residue and the charge, the charge distribution of our protein. So what are we trying to do here now? The first part we use it to sampling the folded and unfolded states. So this is the protein dynamics. And with this energy function, now we are able to sampling the protonation and the protonation process in during the protein folding. And this is what we call 
the protein folder at a constant pH. And we apply this, this method, the methodology, in the l knife protein. This is a work in collaboration with Professor Leandro. And the uh, MTR knife protein was chosen because uh, it is completely folded from pre-age 1 to 12 in, in experiments. So to investigate the pH dependence, we, we consider it a, a, good, a good system. The first result that I print from the simulations is the fraction folded against temperature. And this black line is the result for pH 1.5. And the red dashed line here is for pH 5.5. And from this, we can observe a shift in the melt temperature when we make this pH change from 1.5 to 5.5. And this is also observed in experiments. OK, it's not exactly the same, but we have a qualitative agreement between this simulation and experiments. And we investigate it uh, a little a little more. Observe the free energy provider here against Q, the native contacts. In the black line, again, we have pH 1.5. The dashed one is for pH 5.5. And we observe that the native state for pH 5.5 are more stable. So we measure this looking at the unfolded bear here. And we do this kind of simulation for a more wide range of uh, the pH. And we can observe the how is the pH dependent of the stability in this protein. So here is the, this unfolded barrier against pH. This curve is for the simulations. And this curve are for from experiments. And again, we have a qualitative agreement between both, and uh, the peak of the stability is closer to pH 5.5, the same is observed in experiments. So we use the system to, to calibrate the, the model, and we apply it to another system, like protein G. We're here, we try to investigate uh, the salt dependency now. The, during the fold. And for low salt environments, we have, we simulated for pH 2.5, 4.5, 7.5, and 10. This first one is for pH 2.5, the less stable one. And then we go to pH 4.5, which is the most stable one. So and then we come to pH 7.5 and 10. So we are able to observe this pH dependency also in protein G, as we see the melt temperature from the specific heat here. And if we go now to a high salt regime, all the electrostatic are screened by the, the bihook potential, and we have no pH dependence anymore. So all the curves are exactly the same and the same with the structure based model, the standard structure based model simulation. And we also use this methodology in the cold shocking protein from Corindo bacterium, a protein that uh, a experimentalist group of our institute was investigated. And we have again a qualitative agreement between the simulation and the experiments in the specific heat. I'm not showing all the details about this study, but they want to observe in which residues have the, the, the major uh, charge variation, and we identify uh, a histidine, a, a glutamic acid. And uh, again, we come to, to, pro to electrostatic interactions. And in this first pi part, I just want to show a little bit uh, what uh, the simple model that we use, the structure based model, are capable to, to observe this pH dependency if we run a constant pH molecular dynamics. 
And uh, we also observe the salt dependency that the, the protein stability has. Mm. And now I go to the second part, that the importance of the electrostatic in the native state. So our interest in that, in this, is to be able to suggest rational mutations to, to experimentalists in enzymes which has, are related to bioethanol production. And the model that we use is a Tom Ford Kirkwood electrostatic model. And the, the group who perform the wet lab experiments are in CTBE, which is the, the Brazilian National Laboratory of Bioethanol Studies. So to, to introduce, uh, before int going to the, the electrostatic question, I will talk a little bit of which is this bioethanol. So the ethanol production, uh, I say about here in Brazil, but uh, all of the world pro pro can produce this. You will split this in two generations. So the first one, you you got the, you need to get the liquid part of the sugarcane biomass, which you can call this uh, the sugarcane juice. Here in Brazil, we call it garapa. And this goes to the fermentation and it produces the, 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 the cachaça, the alcohol for, for the cars. And this is a, a well well-known process by the Brazilian industry. But this corresponds only for uh, one third of all the, the sugarcane biomass. And the strategy now is how we can use uh, this two thirds of the, the sugarcane biomass. We call this bagasse. And mostly of this two thirds, uh, the, the composition of this two, two, two thirds, the biomass of sugarcane, are mostly composed by cellulose, and cellulose and lignin, a complex chain of sugars. And the strategy is to perform an enzymatic hydrolysis in this, in cellulose, and cellulose and lignin, to break this complex chain, to transform it in, in all sugar subunits. So then you can go to, to fermentation process. So here is the bottleneck of the, the entire process which uh, involve the, the most, the highest price of the entire process, and we need to start to working on the, on the optimization of this part. So optimi optimization of uh, enzymes became the topic of the protein engineering, which we wanted to change the optimum active condition of our enzymes to work in the uecto conditions, which is pH 5.5 and temperature 55. And if we talk about uh, change conditions and pH, we are talking about charts. And we look at the charts in proteins, we, we choose uh, a more detailed, a simple, a simple model to, to investigate these interactions, which uh, was shown by, by Matakazi that if you optimize the electrostatic interactions of your protein by doing some mutations and optimizing that, you lead your protein to a more stable state. So you increase the, ter the term stability of your protein. Opti optimize the charge charge interaction. And the, mod the model that uh, he uses and we use as, as also is the Tom Ford Kirkwood model, which our protein are approximate to a sphere. In, in the inner, we have a low constant uh, dielectric constant. We have a ion exclusion shell. And we have, again, uh, now a high constant of the electric associated to the solvent. And this is the, the interaction energy. 
of two charts inside this this sphere which a and d are related to this the difference of the the dielectric constant c are associated to the solvent and the ionic strength and this last term are associated with uh, how exposed you are the side chain side chain of your of your residue and uh, once we know the the energy interaction of these two charts in my protein we can now perform suggest some mutations in the charge residues which will follow this criteria if the residue contribute we have to destabilize the native state it has if he, he has positive positive energy values and he needed to be exposed to solvent then we call it a good candidate to be mutated and follow this the simple criteria we tested in xylanase enzymes which is the family of glycohydrolase 11 has 23 quart charts and this it, it is one of the, the enzymes used the in the reactor and the results are quite simple and what we have it's this graph bar with the each bar corresponds to the energy of each residue and i point you highlighted in red here the residues each follow all our criteria so it has positive energy and they are exposed to solvent the first one that i pick is the lysine 99 which has the energy 0.74 and they are exposed to, to solvent uh, if the side chain like is 75 percent and uh, this is the, the first candidate that we have to perform a mutation and the mutation that we suggest is you remove this lysine 99 and insert uh, a glutamic acid so we, we are doing here uh, a charge inversion i remove a positive charge and i insert a negative charge in my protein again we run the simulations for the the mutated enzyme and what we observe at the first is that the total electrostatic energy contribution decrease what this is good of course and these decreases are more most associated to the the stability of the position 99 and which helps to stabilize all the positions in our protein so okay everything is beautiful until now it's theory but uh, the question is it works and the people buy our, our idea and go to the and went to the wet, wet lab and perform some results uh, the first that's right present was the fraction fold against temperature which the black line was for the white type enzyme and the dash d is for from the our mutated one and we have a small decrease increase in the melt temperature about uh, 1.5 say degrees celsius okay it's maybe it's not means a lot but if you consider that these enzymes are uh, a thermophile they are from a thermophile organism we are satisfied with this result because it came from theory in the simple model and another result that i want to show is that our protein increase the thermal tolerance we can say that in here is the enzyme activity against time and our mutated here in red keep it active for more time in the reactor conditions than the white type and also uh, the, the the mutated one has more active than than the white type so the conclusion that we have in, uh, until now is that uh, this simple model based on, on electrostatic are worked for this system 
And now the, the experimentalist came to us and asked if we can change the optimum activity of, the, of this enzyme. And because in one part of the process, uh, the reactor goes from pH 5 to 10. I do not know the details. And what they want to do is to take uh, this zymonase from pH 5 and may in change it to be optimal activity in pH 10. So we run the simulation again. Now I break uh, a little the rules. I not take the the the, the residue which are exposed to solvent. I'm not uh, interested in, in term stability here. And I suggest this mutation for now, which is the position 78. And if, if, you, if we follow this black line, this is the white type. We have the minimum of the energy in pH 5. This is OK. It's uh, what we have already had. And if, if we do a mutation here, the optimum energy are close to pH 10 the pH that they want. So this work is ongoing. We do not have uh, experimental results yet. And we apply this for the, this TK, the for the Kirkwood model to, to other systems. And now I come back to, to Protein G to finish the work. And we ran, we ran the simulations for pH 2.5, 5.5, 7.5, and 10. We have different energy profiles for each pH. We observe that the for pH 4.5, we have the, the most stability, electrostatic energy. And we re sorry? Oh, it's 300 Kelvin. And we ran the simulations for for a uh, uh, wider range of pHs, and again the the peak of the stability is in pH 4.5. The same peak of the stability that we have using the the structure David model in a constant pH with molecular dynamics, and is also it's close to to ex experiments again. And talk a, a little bit of other system. We apply this in, in our work, in a collaboration with Professor Ronaldo. With, uh, it's in, in blot 5. It's allergen from dust mite. And uh, what we, we observe here, we take the electrostatic energy in the epitope and uh, suggest some mutations which stabilize that region. And the people, they did the clinical trials and observed that with this, this antigen, the, the people uh, do not respond to allergy. So they, resu they resu re reduced the, the allergy in the patient with this one. And use the results from the literature, if we plot, if we neutralize one with of these charts, we also observed a reduction in the in the pacing, the patient allergy. So we made available this tool, which is very fast. It's for a, a big protein. It's ran in almost in one minute. And we will have the only input that you need to, to, to insert is your PDB and you run for your, your, your pH. And the temperature you can is also input. And the output that you, you have will be, you'll be the energy per residue, a, a graph like, like that. So the energy for each residue. The total energy as a function of the pH which is this graphic here, and in red, the candidate for uh, a mutation, 
which is the residue if the positive energy values, which are exposed to solvents. So that's it. And I would, uh, I would, would like to, to acknowledge the Professor Vitor and how this is the, the group. Uh, I would al also would like to, to thank the, the collaborators, Professor Leandro, Professor, Professor Ronaldo, and the institutions, and FAPESP for my scholarship. That is it. Thank you. <laughs>